thought of leaving I had built out of rocks oh, right. before I no longer had the need for such a thing. They even appeared to be able to wield fire and lit up the night in ways that I had only seen from the thunder of an angry sky. As time went on, more and more of them would come and visit me, and I slowly gained their trust, even if their caution and fear never fully passed. I learned over time what their noises meant, and after some effort on my part, we were able to communicate quite well. They would often come to me and ask questions about the area. Good hunting grounds, water sources, places to make a new village. After all, I had been almost everywhere. One day, some of them started leaving strange carvings in stone around where I slept. I asked one of them about the artifacts, a youngling who had come to ask for my help removing a mighty tree, which threatened to fall on his hut. Satay dinner or taco time? Yeah. Made with 100% Aussie Irish people. He told me they were left as offerings so that I might bless them with good fortune. He told me how their lives are hard and short. As and then told me that uh, God, I such as myself, awesome. could surely make their lives better. This was the first time I had encountered the concept of a God. I had taken a liking to these little ones, so I had already been eating them with my knowledge whenever they would ask for it. But he was right. I could do more. Much more. I remembered the look of terror on many of the little people's faces as I towered over their village. Perhaps they were expecting some wrath for a perceived slight. I can't know, but I quickly made it clear I was there to help by removing the offending tree and setting it out of harm's way. Our relationship expanded quickly over the next few years, and they devised great and clever projects which took advantage of my size and relative strength. In those years, we accomplished in days what would have taken them decades on their own, were it even possible at all. We even replaced the village huts with a more durable collective structure, stones stacked so tall that they dwarfed the trees around them. The giant pile of boulders were carefully stacked to create a living space to spare. A crude pyramid of sorts, I would later come to realize. Things went well for a while, and I took a very active role in the lives of my new friends. It reminded me of my old monkey friend from so long ago, except this time there were many, and I could speak to them and share my thoughts and feelings. It was an exhilarating time for me, and we accomplished much. We dug trenches to allow water to reach areas where they could cultivate crops. We studied the stars together and speculated on the mysteries of the forest and the world. I watched the friends be born friends to appear. After many, many years though, the born. number of friends grew, and grew, and grew, and eventually, there were so many that they began to fight each other over what seemed to be the infinite bounty of the forest. Their noises changed, and I could no longer understand all of them anymore, only the ones I remained near. They began to ask me for help or blessings hunting other people, fighting other villages, I always refused. The tipping point came when the village I attended attempted to sacrifice a young girl in my name in order to gain my support in an upcoming raid. I had tried to tolerate them and understand them, but their pettiness had boiled over and I was exacerbated. There were too many people, too many villages, too many conflicts, too much sadness. It felt like I was crawling through.